You're watching the men's channel. Relationships between two committed adults break down all the time. But it is the children who suffer the most. Although young children will never miss out on the bickering, they will typically miss out on dad especially if the child's mother is purposefully withholding visitation rights from the father. This, along with the psychological components, are what's referred to as parental alienation. Before the bloom falls off of a new relationship, everything seems beautiful and magical. Who would have imagined a short time earlier that two separate and distinct families could merge into one? That those families would collectively pull for the future parents of a relationship that would one day be dissolved by a selfish act called divorce. That one parent would see the children as their property and because of this, partial out visitation rights to the father. Yes, the children's mother would not mind if every person on earth dealt with her children, just as long as it was not their biological father. of many parental alienation cases are generally preceded by some hapless father coming home to an empty house and a dear John letter from his wife on the kitchen table. These particular notes as a great book the Dear John Microsoft program format typically read as follows. This relationship no longer makes me happy and I went out of it immediately. Don't worry about the kids because they are fine and with me. Don't attempt to contact myself, the children, nor my parents unless you go through my attorney first. Wow. At this point, the shocked husband wanders through the entire home in disbelief to see what has been left behind. And he finds scattered throughout the empty house snacks, chips, and candy stuck to the floors where the children sat regularly to eat them. The kitchen refrigerator door still has a makeshift card hung up by magnets, the coolly drawn card written to dad saying how much they loved him Father's Day passed. The floors of several rooms he traveled strong with the remnants of toys left in a hasty attempt to vacate the house long before he returned home. He comes across a box game cooties that he used to watch his little ones fight over for the chance of being the blue worm. I want to be the blue worm. No, I want to be. Tucked in a sofa, he finds his daughter's cool girl's doll that she could never live without despite the many times she misplaced it. Coming across this doll painfully reminds him of losing a little girl who actually loved him more than his wife who just abandoned him. And finally, finding his son's weathered catcher's mitt on the back porch. He will remember the weekends appointments they had to toss the softballs around until their hands were tired from the effort. But the two guys were adamant about improving. For this father, it was not as important that his son become a world-class catcher, but that he get the full experience on becoming a man by a man that loved him. But far more damaging than the abandonment issue this father will face is the arduous journey through the hell that both parents will have to endure through a family court. A court system in which the mother who initiated these actions will seek full custody of two children that took both parents to create. Yes, in that laughable one-sided court in which the judge's orders concerning shared visitation rights are hardly ever headed, no matter how many times fathers file a petition. Now, a court system that defines a father not as a loving human being, but a source of income to replace his time as a loving parent. Now, the argument of a man's worth as income in a divorce flies in the face against the complaint that he was never there because he had to make an income. Now my question is, why are these men judged as ill-equipped for making money while they are with their families 
and then respected for doing nothing but earning money in the absence of that same family. The separation of family without a male role model usually enacts a lasting toll on the young minds of its offspring. You see, I believe that a father's love is not easily measured by him nor by his children, especially during their youth. But in society, we can clearly weigh the absence of fatherhood and its devastating effects on his adult children. In this series, we seek to address the concerns of fathers who have been cheated out of their rights to be a parent with the stroke of a divorce court pen, as well as men who have been denied the right to co-parent their children by false allegations of abuse or neglect by the child's mother. You see, beyond society's false notions that children do not need fathers in the home, or that children can have a healthy upbringing, minus the man that brought them into the existence, is harmful in and of itself. I believe that today a male is more devastated by the loss of fatherhood once they have been introduced to living with children, as opposed to the man who has a child sprung on him by a one-time sexual fling. You see, men grow up differently than their female counterparts in that they do not plan out marriage or children in grade school like little girls do. The average male usually is drafted into love by falling for a woman that he lives with long enough to marry. A man who enjoys a healthy sexual relationship with a love interest may not engage in sex primarily to make a baby, but possibly she will. Once drafted into that coupling, he now becomes thrust into a nervous period of planning for fatherhood. He seeks not to make the mistakes his father or family did before him in raising children. In short order, he has adjusted his lifestyle overnight to allow a woman to make his house into a home with him. And an even shorter time period for children to share that once manly space. Now here's where the tragedy comes in. Here's the rub. Once men are given their all and taking care of the family, end up getting blindsided after their wife or significant other decides she wants out of a relationship that she adamantly encouraged a man to get into and that she wanted possession of the children she once convinced that father they should share parenthood with over an entire lifetime. What these women cannot fathom is that after years of adjusting to family life, as their husband did, it becomes difficult to imagine oneself out of that loving providership role, no matter how difficult times may have gotten. For the man that once noisy, rambunctious house becomes silent, yes, this is the loss that committed fathers face and write us about all the time on M&M. It is those concerned fathers who cannot understand an email after email while mothers fight to get men who they consider deadbeat dads into their father's life while trying to push out committed men into their father's uh, children's life over the long haul. Now, there are plenty of sad stories from Main Street to Wall Street to Hollywood where men have been denied the privilege of raising their own children. Take the case of the actor Alec Baldwin versus his ex-wife, actress Kim Basinger. Now, Mr. Baldwin said these words concerning his parental alienation troubles back in 2007. I have been driven to the edge, end quote. Mr. Baldwin was apparently apologizing to the public for his angry voicemail to his daughter, which he contributed to the stress of his custody fight with Kim Basinger and insisting that he had a normal relationship with his daughter. He went on to say, I'm sorry, as everyone who knows me is aware for losing my temper with my child. I have been driven to the edge by parental alienation for many years now. You have to go through this to understand, he said, although I hope you never do. Now, I'm happy for what I would happen, he added. I have endured a great deal over the last several years of my custody litigation. Now, everyone who knows me probably knows that certain people will go to any lengths to embarrass me and to distract my relationship with my daughter, end quote. Parental alienation is a hotly debated topic in custody cases. The actor and singer Tyrese Gibson, known for his roles in the Fast and Furious movie series, knows this all too well. His ex-wife, Norma Gibson, who was an Israeli citizen, sought to take the couple's seven-year-old daughter to Israel for vacation. Now, however, due to this concern that Norma would seek to remain in Israel permanently, Tyree sought to prevent Norma from taking their daughter to Israel. The television show TMZ reported at the time that despite Tyree's legal fight, a judge ordered Tyree to turn the child's passport over to Norma so that Norma could take the child to Israel for two weeks for the spring vacation. In venting his frustrations, 
Tyrese Gibson spoke candidly on the Tavis Smiley Morning Show concerning the years of fighting his ex-wife in court just to get the chance of having a normal life with his own daughter. He spoke passionately on how he was prevented from seeing her for almost three months with a protection order based upon a phony assault charge. Mr. Gibson, despite his career, sees his daughter as a driving force for living. In a previous interview, he referred to himself as a dad first, anything that would make for himself a career second. Now, these are cases, ladies and gentlemen, that simply don't make sense even on Main Street. What kind of insane court system will grant a mother sole custody to whisk away a man's children only to make a new home with a strange man that go in and out of their children's lives with characters worse than the husbands you claim you needed escape from? Now, what kind of court system would advocate a home life that in all aspects is more dangerous, rudderless, and leaderless for the promoting of a system of raising children in poverty and by as many men as can be called their new fathers. Now, while transit men are uplifted at sexual freedom for losing a single mother, the natural fathers are left with fighting a barrage of false accusations made up against them. Take the accusation made up against the actor Tyrese for abuse against his daughter. Now, the Los Angeles County Department of Children and Family Services had to close the investigation and Tyrese's alleged beating of Shayla and would not be seeking any criminal charges against the actor because it was completely false. Now, Child Protective Services initially launched the investigation into Tyrese after Norma, who was married to Gibson from 2007 to 2009, accused Mr. Gibson of abusing their daughter on August 19, alleged in court. Now, she said he pushed our daughter to the ground, pinned her face down, put his knee on her back, grabbed her hands with one arm and beat her with the other. His ex-wife alleged in court documents that her ex uh, hit Shayla between 12 and 16 times, leading the child to allegedly later tell her mother that she couldn't sit down due to pain. Now, in court documents, physical and legal custody of Shayla was temporarily granted to Norma, ordering Tyrese to stay 100, 100 yards away from both of them, as well as Norma's home. This is wrong. Tyrese Rep confirmed reports to People Magazine that the child services had closed the investigation and would not be seeking any criminal charges. Now, Tyrese previously told the magazine in a statement that Norman's allegations were hurtful lies. Now, in a twist of fate, our last Hollywood case of besmirching of father's character would lead to the actress' wife losing full custody of her children. Anyone going through a child custody dispute right now might have heard about actress Kelly Rutherford losing her children. For the past few years, the actress' two children, ages six and eight, had been living with their father in uh, Monaco after his U.S. visa was revoked. Now, however, there are reports that Mrs. Rutherford's actions led to her losing primary custody of her own children. Rutherford had reportedly been attempting to sever any relationship that the father had to the children. This has ranged from Rutherford refusing to tell her former husband about the birth of their second child and not naming him as father on the child's birth certificate. It has also been alleged that Rutherford was a source that led to her ex visa being revoked. Very nice woman, right? Now, this led to several years of Miss Rutherford flying out of the country to visit her children since the father could not, no longer come to the United States. In these cases, when a child custody dispute is occurring and the adults involved cannot come to an agreement, the courts must determine what is in the child's best interest. One factor that is often heavily weighed is whether or not one parent supports the relationship with the other parent. Courts often side with the parent that helps foster a relationship over a parent who attempts to interfere. So let us let us spend the remainder of this program giving you some insight into the family court system if you are going through a custody battle right now. You need to know that there are other factors that can help the courts make decisions concerning your children when it comes to child custody disputes. If children are older, their wishes may be taken into consideration by the judge. The court may also consider the stability of the home environment and the mental and physical health of both parents. If there is allegations of abuse or neglect, an attorney may help provide evidence that either substantiates those claims or that demonstrates that the allegations are unfounded, which are the roots of parental alienation. Now, Parental alienation is a set of strategies that a parent uses to foster 
a child's rejection of other parents. Now, brooding alienation syndrome develops in children who come to hate, fear, and reject targeted parents as someone unworthy of having a relationship with. Any attempts at alienating children from the other parent should be seen as a direct and willful violation of one's prime duties of parenthood. Now, this is a direct quote from J. Michael Bone and Michael R. Walsh. They are the authors of Parental Alienation Syndrome, the subtitle of that book, How to Detect It and What to Do About It. They explain parental alienation, or PA for short, as an emotional disturbance in which a child sees one parent as good and the other as bad. Now, PA happens in children whose parents are going through a divorce or custody battle. When the primary parent brainwashes a child, the case becomes known as parental alienation syndrome, or PAS for short. The child begins showing extreme hostility towards the perceived bad parent, verbally vilifying them, and refusing to do anything with that parent. Children with the syndrome are known to be deceptive, and finding evidence is not easy. So how does one prove parental alienation syndrome? Proving that a spouse manipulates a child can be difficult. A parent sometimes maintains a diary of how the child acts when around other people and finds witnesses who can testify about denigrating things the child says. Now, PAS children often contort stories to make alienated parents look bad, a behavior promoted uh, by the alienated parent. A child with PAS sometimes repeats lies and misinformation around other family members and friends. Now, as an example, is a mother who has primary custody repeatedly telling her children that the father is worthless and does not care about him or her. P.A.'s parents have been known to directly interfere with custody visitation rights that they have also sought to prevent the alienated parent from attending school functions and not allowing the child to keep any gifts received from the alienated parent. A parent who is a victim of a P.A.S. should attempt to reverse the alienation by spending as much time as physically possible with their child. Maintaining the relationship can help the child realize he or she has been manipulated by the other parent. Avoid negative communication with their alienated parent, which will lessen the chance to create conflict. Now, the late Dr. Richard A. Gardner, who formulated the Bruno alienation syndrome theory, advised the targeted parent to not speak badly about the aggressor in the presence of the kids. Now, by holding still, the alienated parent can shield children from the effects of bad mouthing and prevent losing respect, affecting of contact with them. Parental alienation destroys a child's relationship with the other parent, particularly when a parent intentionally undermines a child's relationship with the other parent. Parental alienation is a form of child abuse because it creates a confused emotion and it damages relationship, loss of family adopted hatred from the alienator and withdrawal symptoms. So, how does parental alienation syndrome work? Here's an example. Mom makes negative comments about dad in front of a child, and the child becomes confused. The father of the child has always loved and is now presented as a monster, and they uh, don't know whether to trust their mother's words or their own feelings. The child loses a relationship with one parent because the alienator often severs the child's ties with the other. And that child may never recover that relationship. Now, when one parent is a monster and the other one is always angry, the child feels that the family is lost. The child who is the victim of an alienator takes on an obsessive hatred of his other parent but without any personal experience to rationalize it. The child withdraws from normal life, avoiding contact with other people, the parent and the parents extend the family. When this happens, they miss out on all the fun activities. So, how do you beat parental alienation? Here are some of the ways that targeted parents can reconnect with their kids. First, address lies and bad mouth. Conventional wisdom to say nothing in the face of bad mouthing does targeted parents a huge disservice. Encourage your child to speak directly. Manage your emotional reactivity. What does parental alienation do to your child? The severe effects of parental alienation on children are well documented. Low self-esteem, self-hatred, lack of trust, depression, and substance abuse and other forms of addictions are widespread as children lose the capacity to give and accept love from a parent. Now, can you lose custody for parental alienation? Yes, you most certainly can. The author Mir found that when mothers claim any type of abuse, if fathers respond by claiming parental alienation, 
then the mothers were twice as likely to lose custody as when the father did not claim alienation at all. Now, in a study start conclusion, alienation trumps abuse. Finally, take these steps to heart when going into custody mediation and know what not to say. Don't use a mediation session for accusing the other parent. Don't say yes to everything. Don't say you don't need a lawyer present. Don't do this. So, if you have been in a case where you've been alienated from your child, whether it's when they're infants, toddlers, or adults, and you want to get reconnected to that relationship, let us know about it. Next time, when this show is on, we'll feature your story. In the bottom, give us your comments of what happened to your relationship. Remember to thumbs up this video, and we'll see you next time. For the Men's Channel, this is Charles Rivers of Parental Alienation. Thank you.